Hi, this is Mashnu, and I want to show you one of my own games again. It has been a while since I made my last chess video. Uh, I believe it was somewhere in October or November, so a few months ago. And I've been a bit lazy about these chess videos, um, so I want to again make a new start and try to continue this. Um, this game was played in the uh, chess, the, the, the club competition, uh, in the last week of January, and I was playing black, so I'm, I'll turn the board around. Uh, let's see how it um, is like this. Yeah. Okay. So I was playing black here, and my opponent opened with e4, and normally I play here d6, the the pair defense, but this time I um didn't want to play this. This time I wanted to try the Aliyahin defense. The Aliyahin defense, named after the former world champion Alexander Aliyahin, is a very old defense and I, I, I did a few videos, a few videos about this defense, uh, about the strategic ideas behind it. So if you are um, interested in seeing a bit more about this, then uh, I recommend you to have a look at the, at the other videos that I did. Um, now lately, this, this last last years, we don't see the, the Aliyahin much in uh, Grandmaster tournaments because it's it has become a bit of a, a bit of an old-fashioned uh, defense but on amateur level, so let's say up to up to uh, ELO 2100, 2200, everything can be played because our knowledge of, of, of theory is not that big, so uh, we can simply uh, try it and experiment. White answered e5 here. I played knight to d5. d4 was played, now d6. And, well, let me tell you the main idea um, behind the Aliyah in defense is to invite white to, to advance these pawns, the center pawns. So later, a weakness can um, can appear there, so you can attack those those pawns. It is true that black is losing some time by moving his knight several times in the opening, but uh, the weakness of the uh, white pawns, white center pawns, uh, compensate this. Knight of three was played now, and I played bishop two g four. This is a very logical idea. The idea is to trade later this bishop for this knight because the knight is the main defender of the two white pawns here so actually black is trying to uh, eliminate one of the defenders so the um, the main idea of attacking these center pawns can be continued later now here my opponent advanced the c pawn to c4 so again my knight is attacked I went to b6 and now bishop to e2 was played here the um, the most played move is the move e6. I chose to play knight to c6. Now I, m I must tell you honestly that I'm not a player that um, memorizes opening theory. I, I I'm actually a bit against this idea of memorizing moves. What I like to do, <coughs> sorry, what I like to do is to um, understand the main ideas of an opening and then simply try it out and find things during the game. Um, the most important thing about learning openings is that you understand what the main strategic and tactical ideas are. So, from this point on, I <coughs> simply started um, improvising. I played knight to c6 with the same idea of placing a piece attacking these two pawns. So, right now, the idea is to later trade this bishop for the knight and then attack those two pawns further. White took on d6. Now I didn't want to take with the e pawn because I didn't want to have a, a symmetrical uh, pawn structure, but I wanted to create a bit more imbalances. So c takes d6. Now b3 was played and that's a very interesting move because um, the c4 pawn now is being defended by b3. So that means that if I trade on f3, white can recapture with the bishop. Normally, well, let's say 
the more, more usual move here is to play d5 by white. This is seen very often. And then what happens is that black takes on f3. And if white retakes with the bishop, then the knight goes to e5, and we have an attack to the c4 pawn. So bishop to e2, then we cannot take immediately on c4, because there is a queen a4 check later. You see, so take, 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 and then queen a4 check. If queen d7, then queen takes c4. So here, black must play g6 and make use of this beautiful long diagonal here. Um, well, let's go back to the game now, because this is not what happened. What, hap what white did was another idea, is to play b3. So, perhaps he wants to place his bishop on b2, to try to make use of, of this diagonal here, by his own bishop, and he's also reinforcing c4. So, I played here g6, he played h3, so now my bishop has to make a decision either to take on f3 or to move the bishop away. I thought quite a long time here and I decided not to take on f3 this time because this pawn on c4 is so well defended. So if I take I will simply give away the bishop's pair and I wasn't sure if I would have any um, compensation for that. So I decided to um, to keep the bishop and play bishop to f5. Also because I have now one piece looking at the c2 square and because of this um, advances of the pawns b3 and c4 <coughs> later perhaps I can play bishop, uh, knight to uh, b4 and knight to c2 check things like that so perhaps the c2 square can become a bit weak later. Well, in the game it, I didn't succeed in this, but th that was my idea when I played bishop to f5. Knight to c3 was played here, and here I continue with bishop to g7. I did look at b uh, knight to b4 here. Well, this is the move that I played, but I, I did calculate this, and I thought that this was uh, not good, because white can simply castle, and after knight to c2 attacking the rook, um, the idea would be to force white to play rook to b1, so then I can move my knight away, attacking the rook. But the thing is that here, white has the move g4 attacking my bishop, and then my bishop has to go away from this diagonal here. Uh, and then my knight will fall. And the only other option is to right now to take on a1, take the rook, then white takes on f5, and it looks as if I have won the uh, exchange, but the problem is that this knight on a1 is lost. It cannot escape, because the only escaping route would be c2 or b3, and both uh, squares are in hands of white. So it would mean that I would, uh, I would have lost uh, two light pieces for a rook, and that's, uh, that's not enough. So well, let's go back to the <coughs> game now. So here I didn't play knight 2 before I did consider it, and those are things that you always have to consider and calculate, because sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So, bishop to g7, bishop to e3, and again, um, not an easy moment here to make a decision. I was thinking about playing d5 or e5 myself. I remembered that I had seen some games some grandmaster games were in this type of positions black plays d5, d6, d5 and the idea of playing this is that um, wait a minute, can I uh, so playing d5 here means that the pawn on d4 um, becomes fixed so this d4 pawn is attacked by the knight, is attacked by the bishop uh, at the moment it is very well defended, but uh, later in the game it can become an idea to try to attack this one. For example, by trading at some point the bishop for the knight. So that's the, the idea of the move d65, but in the game I didn't do that. What I did is I played e5. So immediately attacking the d4 pawn and 
this was not a, a, a good decision um, well luckily for me um, my opponent didn't react the the best way he um, he played rook to c1 here putting away the rook from this dangerous diagonal that is going to be opened mm, where this bishop is standing but the best move here actually would have been for white to play d5 himself and then my knight I'm sorry I could ad advance here on, on e4 attacking his knight on f3 this is the the best variation knight to d4 knight to e5 saving both knights and now the problem that starts arising for black is that after a4 and castling a5 knight to c8 black has less and less space to maneuver especially for this knight on, on c8 it's very difficult to to reroute it in such a way that it becomes active somewhere so this this would have been good for for white i think because of this um, lack of space for for black let's go back to the game again because rook to c1 was played and I still didn't realize the, the, the disadvantages for me after and ev eventually if he plays uh, d5 so I ignored it, I, I, I cancelled kingside and again he could have played d5, he didn't, he took on e5 now and after this I was very happy because after retaking here now I have strong uh, pawn, uh, pawn in the center on e5 controlling this other center square d4 he cancelled here I played knight to d4 he continued with knight to g5 and at first sight I didn't know what to think about this move I thought what, what does he want does he want to advance the f-pawn or does he want to make the square f3 available for his bishop what does he want and the third option and that's probably the idea of my, my opponent uh, was to play the knight from g5 to e4 uh, to have this, this knight placed there in the center I took on e2 check white must retake and then I played bishop to d3 there was another variation that I found here and that is oh yeah to play h6 here and now force the knight to go back to um, to f3 and now here go with the queen to f6 with the idea of placing a rook on d8 and controlling the d-file but that's not what I did I played here bishop to d3 it looks a bit strange maybe this move but my idea was to oh wait a minute my phone is ringing mm. Okay, I'm back again. Um, let's see, what was I? Bishop d3, last move. So, my idea was to play after this the move e4. And with e4, I would be. Um, oh, sorry. Can I. Uh, why doesn't this work? Okay, like this. Uh, with e4, I would have control over this f3 square and that's the only escape square for this knight and also with e4 I would open this diagonal for my bishop so I would threaten also bishop to b2 attacking the rook on c1 and the rook on c1 doesn't have any square to go so this was my idea after uh, bishop to d3 behind bishop to d3 my opponent played here the move rook to e1 simply getting rid of this pin and I moved e4 so I have these two different threads now and my opponent played f3 now with f3 I cannot play h6 because then knight takes e4 so what I did is I played bishop to b2 winning the exchange but there is a counterpart that is that I will be losing my dark square bishop so it, this squares, this dark squares on my king side can become weak so this was um, something that I had to 
think about before making this decision is it worth to win material and weaken these squares well white still has his dark square bishop to go to h6 and I don't want to have in some way a queen entering in this diagonal then and threatening checkmate on g7 things like that but well I uh, took the risk I played bishop to b2 my opponent answered knight takes e4 I took the rook he retook with the queen bishop takes e4 f takes e4 and now we come into a new uh, part of the game let's say at the moment white has a weak pawn on e4 this isolated pawn and black has weaknesses on the dark squares here also this knight on b6 is not well placed and one of the advices that are given uh, in chess when you want to, to try to make a plan and is uh, to try to improve the position of your worst piece and that's exactly what I did here my worst piece was this knight that's my, my opinion so I played knight to d7 with the idea of bringing this knight to e5 bishop to g5 attacks my queen I gave a check on b6 now the king went to h1 knight to e5 and with this last move I have a little problem and that is that this bishop on g5 is controlling the d8 square and I would like so much to have a rook on my d on the d file so I played rook, uh, queen to c3 here and I played f6 f6 defends the knight and also regains the control over this uh, d8 square bishop to h6 trying to make use of the weaknesses of these dark squares now fortunate for me is that this uh, diagonal now is closed by this pawn on f6 so the, the danger is not that big although the pawn on f6 must not become weak rook to d8 knight to f4 wanting to go to d5 queen to d4 I thought if I trade queens the danger of uh, an eventual attack on these uh, squares like uh, f6 and the dark squares there is um, less and an end game is better for me because I have two rooks against one rook so queen to b4 was played here of course my opponent doesn't want to trade queens and he is now threatening to enter to e7 with the queen and threaten mate on g7 so I played rook to d7 defending this e7 square the knight went to d5 attacking the f6 pawn where it would fork my king and rook so we can say that at the moment here there is a fight for the initiative white is trying to attack by um, placing his pieces on more active squares and later this rook from e1 can go to f1 and attack f6 one more time that happened in the game as well uh, knight to d3 was played here for me I so I'm, I'm attacking his queen, I'm attacking his rook as well um, he played queen to b5 here um, it's not the best move it is attacking my rook now so if I take his rook he takes my rook and then threatens again to enter on g7 um, there was an even better move for, for white and that is a queen to d2 and the idea behind this is that he's pinning now my knight so my knight cannot move from b3 my queen cannot move because I cannot leave this uh, d3 knight undefended so it would become more difficult for me uh, a possible continuation would be to uh, to play rook to f7 to defend the f6 pawn and after rook to f1 rook to e8 things like this but it's uh, it's difficult it's difficult especially after the, the the following move bishop to e3 attacking my queen so now I must leave my knight alone there so queen to e4 and then rook to f3 um, 
threatens two things knight takes f6 check and also knight to c3 so let's see what could be a continuation here knight to e5 and then if he takes here yes he can take simply there and, and regain the exchange so this was was could be dangerous for him but it's very complicated it's a com complicated uh, variation it's not easy to see this in the um, in the game um, well luckily for me my opponent didn't see it he, he played queen to b5 I answered rook to d8 rook to f1 putting more pressure on f6 and I played here my knight to f2 with check king to h2 knight takes e4 defending f6 and winning a pawn of course now bishop to e3 was played and here is a, a, a little tactical idea that my opponent missed normally when a piece is attacked like in this case the queen by the bishop the first thing that we think about is oh I have to move away my queen now but there is another very strong move and that is rook takes e5 that's what I played attacking the queen and in all variations I win material here um, for example if he, if he takes on on d4 then I take his queen and here if he takes mine then I take the bishop and I'm a full piece up here so this endgame is totally won for me um, if he takes with a c-pawn then I simply retake here on e3 and he takes on b7 this is what happened in the game and again I'm a full piece up now uh, the only thing is that the queens are still on the board so I have to be careful but after a few moves check here king to g1 queen to e3 check I, I repeated this move to um, to get closer to the time control queen to d4 he played queen to e7 and that's a big mistake because it, bigs, it, it gives me the possibility of uh, trading queens here this is what happened and after rook to e1 it looks as if he's going to win a pawn there but after knight to c3 I'm attacking his pawn on d5 so he takes on d4 and I take the pawn here so the material is I'm a piece up and he's he has a, a pawn majority on the queen side but it's uh, it's not that difficult but it, it's still interesting the, the the rest of the game because he plays queen to e7 and it's a very strong move not only because he attacks my weak pawn on uh, on a7 but above all because he's uh, restricting my king to go to the center and in the end game the uh, king is a very strong piece so it's important to have it active uh, so this rook on the seventh rank is uh, is annoying for me I played rook to a5 defending my pawn and attacking his pawn he plays a4 rook to a6 I played here the plan that I have is I'll go back one move the plan that I have here is I want to activate my king now to activate my king I have to bring it to the center now I cannot bring it to the center right now so I need to place this knight on f7 so then my king can go to g7 and f6 so this knight on f7 would be like a shield against this attack of the rook on the 7th rank and also I want to be able to um, not bring maybe my knight to f7 but to e7 so play king to f8 and then bring the knight to e7 eventually with the same idea but in both cases the h7 pawn will be uh, I'm sorry in this case it will be falling because after king f8 this h7 pawn is undefended so what I wanted to do is to place my rook on a6 defending my g6 pawn so I can play h5 the g6 pawn is then defended by the rook and then have my plan of king to f8 and then bring the knight to e7 and advance with the, um, with the king towards the center um, rook to b7 was played h5 as said now he plays this I attack his 
um, his rook and only one move, move from this I have knight to e7 so king f8 knight e7 is the logical uh, following moves here and that's what happened so now my king is free to go forward king f7 a5 was played knight to f5 check here already I saw what would happen in the next uh, three moves three half moves king go to f4 king to f6 there is a danger of threat here that was not seen by my uh, opponent I'm threatening to play g5 check because if I give a check on g5 so the pawn advancing from g6 to g5 the king wherever it goes I have a fork winning the rook in the game he played b4 I played g5 and here you can see it's check if the king goes to f3 then I have knight d4 check and winning the rook and the other option for the king is to go to e4 and in that case I have a fork on d6 knight d6 check winning the rook so at this point my opponent resigned here so that was the game that I wanted to show you I want to show you one more game and it's a very short one it's just for fun it's actually it's against the player that um, who um, well um, didn't play very well but uh, it's a very short game and I, I found it a very actually fun to play because it's uh, it's a very clear win in only 16 moves um, okay let's go through it don't don't expect any high level chess here from uh, both sides well my opponent is not very strong knight to c3 the first strange idea a knight to e7 he played normally this knight has to go to f6 because the knight on f6 is guarding this e4 square so preventing the white pawn to go to e4 so this is a strange move and uh, I didn't know what the strength was of my opponent uh, when I started the game so I thought maybe this is some obscure uh, variation that I don't know and he does so I have to uh, be careful I played knight to f3 c6 and now I played e4 he played h6 and here I started thinking this is not a very strong continuation he's weakening his king side he looks as if he's preventing knight to g5 or bishop to g5 but that was not my idea to play that so I didn't understand this I played bishop to d3 developing and now he played queen to d6 and after this I thought okay now I know for sure this is not a very cannot be a very strong player because he's moving his queen there is no logical way place to go for that queen is losing time so I thought okay I'll simply play healthy moves and the win must come by itself castle he played knight to d7 the king of black is in the center so I place my rook on e1 wanting to open this e file to be able to attack the king he played a6 here so this is actually the first move that I thought okay now he has a certain plan he wants to play b5 as uh, to have some maybe some play here on the on the queen side so I decided to do a prophylactic move play a4 preventing b5 he played a5 and now it's time to rip open the center e takes d5 c takes d5 and now a small move b3 the idea is to play bishop to a3 and then all the pieces of white will be involved in this active play in the center he played g5 here and I played bishop to a3 attacking the queen the queen goes to c6 now knight to b5 follows threatening to um, give a check on d6 for example he played knight to g8 in order to control this d6 square but here followed a short combination c takes d5 he cannot take with the queen on d5 because then I have knight to c7 check winning the queen and he cannot take with the pawn because that pawn is pinned by my rook 
on e1. So he played queen to b6. Now I took on e6, he took again with the pawn, and the last move of the game was rook to e6. Takes e6, check, attacking king and queen. And of course the queen cannot take the rook because then again knight to c7 check winning the queen and here my opponent decided to uh, stop so he resigned and uh, that was the game so a very short game and uh, well in fact it is in a way instructive because we see what the consequences can be if you simply in the opening play moves just to play a move to be uh, very careful moves but without any plan that's what what black was doing there was not any plan in his move so no uh, positional understanding, no controlling of squares and then you see this kind of disasters then happen so alright well this was this today's video so um, uh, I'm getting a bit tired I'm noticing I'm making mistakes in my English <laughs> well anyway I hope you enjoyed this one and um, uh, my plan is to come to come back again uh, soon with another video okay thank you very much for watching leave your comments on uh, YouTube and um, till next time goodbye